the it's quite clear cut if you had you read the manifesto it's quite clear cut where our social policy is where our stand on welfare is where our stand on cpf is i think cpf is an inadequate instrument for retirement savings i mean more than half do not have the minimum sum we need something to supplement and i have put down we have put down in the manifesto an age an old age pension scheme old age pension scheme okay uh, we want a strong safety net which will prevent singaporeans from falling into insecurity despair in dignity you know this kiasu mentality in this safety net must have three elements firstly a truly affordable universal and comprehensive healthcare insurance number two an unemployment insurance and third an old age pension provided by the state outside of the inadequate cpf i think we are very different from the pap in this respect okay unemployment insurance old age pension Healthcare, they talk about affordable, you know, but it's not really truly affordable. They, what they have got, the government pays only one third of health spending in Singapore. Two thirds are paid out of pocket by us, the citizens. We want to change this to the other way around. Government to pay two thirds and people to pay only one third at most. The health minister said that he will raise it to 40%, from 30 to 40%. I think this is grossly inadequate. It is not first world. It is definitely not first world. First world has got much higher. In fact, some of the third world countries have got much higher share for the government. Will there be a change to the foreign worker, worker quota and policy? The government has already been responding. Will there be further changes in your proposal? Yeah, definitely. I don't think it's... Uh, you know, the government likes to use this word, they want to calibrate. They have been calibrating for so many years. And have they achieved anything? Have they been successful with calibration? All these passwords, you know, what do they mean? What does password mean? Is it effective? You know, it is obviously not effective. We are still having overpopulation. Productivity is so low. You look at the latest, it's only 0 0.9 in the first uh, first quarter of this year when the finance minister in 2010 said uh, have a new productivity plan he wants to achieve three percent productivity growth so far since then it's just so flat it is less than one percent so we are already almost halfway there can he achieve it he is not the first minister who will fail who has failed to achieve productivity in fact, the Prime Minister started in 1985 as Chairman of the Economic Committee talking about productivity growth and what has he achieved after nearly 30 years, right? In the, yeah, 85 to now 2014, nearly yeah, 29 years. Nearly. Has he achieved anything on productivity? We spend billions of dollars on productivity movement, training and skill, and lots of air time, newspaper time, talking about space, talking about productivity. Has he achieved anything? Has he achieved the goal that he set out to achieve? After 30 years, have we not given him enough time to prove himself? What has he proven on productivity after 30 years? and after spending billions and billions of dollars on training. And now Taman has taken over, his performance is just below par. Yeah. The second differentiator between us and the PAP is putting people first. In fact, if you look at a logo, it's symbolic of a hate, the hate outside. The circle represents the head and then the heart inside. So we are a party which think with our heart. It's a paradox here. We think with our heart. Heart is not for thinking, heart is for feeling. So we don't just think with our brains. The PAP has been thinking, thinking, thinking with their brains all these years. The old narrative we work in the first 40 years but the old narrative is not working because we need to put people in the center and if you look at the manifesto
as to we talk about a fair society, we talk about strong, robust economy. Yeah, we must have economic growth. But we talk about strong family. And finally, in our manifesto, we talk about esteemed people. You notice we didn't say confident people. As a psychiatrist, let me illustrate the difference between confidence and esteem. Confidence is doing, speaking well, doing a project well, performing well. Confidence is for the world to see. You do for the world to see. A confident player, a confident singer, a confident worker. But esteem is inside you. Your worth, your identity, your image of yourself. Your self-worth and it's inner you, it's inside you. The esteem. We feel that Singaporeans are no longer feeling esteemed and walking around with dignity with a head high. We are, because of cost of living, because of foreign workers all over the place, because of congestion, because of limited infrastructure, we feel constrained. And with the CPF talk now going on, we feel, even in our retirement, we feel stressed. So where is the esteem? And we have the dubious title of being the most stressed, the unhappiest, and the least emotional people in the world. So what's the point of economic growth at the expense of not building self-esteem in your people? Every person in Singapore counts. And the strong country looks after the weakest people in the country. Not an elitist mentality. The governance of the past must be changed. They, are, they keep changing the building, but the foundation, the core values remain the same. You need to look at meritocracy all over again, otherwise you will continue to have the elitist mentality. The scholars, the elitist ruling over us, not leading over us, ruling over us. We need leaders, real leaders with empathy. Professor Chang Heng Chi talked about the politics of empathy, the politics of love. Robin Chang yesterday, one whole article with the shape of a heart, talking about politics of the heart. So there is this move that the person is worthy and our party wants to make that difference. That's why you have an economist here, you have a psychiatrist here. We complement each other extremely well. Wow. <laughs> okay. May I just read to you the first paragraph of our manifesto, which sums up what, doc, what we are all talking about, what Dr. Lam is talking about. Actually, the title of the manifesto is Fair Society, Strong Families and Esteemed People. People are important. They are the soul of a nation. For the past 50 years, Singaporeans have become secondary to the relentless pursuit of economic growth. The nation has lost its soul. We need a new vision that puts Singaporeans at the heart of the nation. The vision of a fair society with strong families and a confident people with high self-esteem. The visions of Singaporeans first. That's our vision. Yeah. I just want to ask, um, um, beyond the other, what the other opposition parties are offering, what do you have to offer, you know, what value do you have beyond what they are offering? Uh, David, do you want to say something? <coughs> what they are offering? Or? No, I think you are doing okay. Anybody else? I, okay, yeah. I think obviously, um, We will, our differentiation is in quite putting people at the heart of everything. I mean, there are a lot of specific ideas like, you know, a fair society being a strong safety net. People talk about safety net, but uh, what do they mean? The PAP is still struggling. What this safety net is, right? They say, will they go this one, will do this? Final package only for those who are 65. But health costs actually affects everybody, not just the finest of uh, those above 65. 
I think we should have a system that gives, that addresses the issue of health costs for everybody, not just for the pioneers. You know, obviously they, they, uh, they are important, so are the others. Not just being old makes you very important, obviously you are valued for your all experience, but what about the others? So you should not divide the nation in that way. So, very specific, we want to remove the GST uh, because GST is unfair, imposes an unfair burden on the lower and middle class of Singapore. And we want to take a look at economic growth, let's say foreign workers, why are we favoring certain industries like the shipyards with such a high percentage of uh, dependence on foreign workers, you know? 100,000 foreign workers out of a total workforce of 120,000. That's a lot. Why are you favoring the shipyards? What about other industries? Right? Are we going to distort our manpower policy just because of the shipyards? We are also talking about the CPF, as I told you, the OH pension. And obviously, people will ask, do you have the money? to support all this thing. I will just give you a figure. The old age pension, let's say 250 a month per person. Over 12 months, $3,000 per person. How many people are we talking about? Half a million? The pioneers are 450,000. They came out with a figure of 450,000. So let's say if you include those who are 60 years old, not just bring back qualifying age to 60. Let's say we have half a million, half a million people, 500,000 people on age, old age pension. 3,000 a month, 500,000 people, meaning $1.5 billion a year. We can afford it. Every election time, they give you GST vouchers of billions of dollars. So we can afford it without playing with vouchers, GST vouchers. We have worked out, we have uh, we have humongous financial surpluses, right? Massive financial surpluses. And we, are, we have enough to pay for all these things. 